sharing good news of great joy to all people. Elation Church. Welcome to Elation Church. We're excited that you're joining in with us this week for worship. Let's open up by singing a song together as we consider the blessings of the Lord in our lives. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your goodness. And I pray that now as we spend time together in your word, that you would speak to our hearts. Help us to take hold of your truth with joy today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, last week we began a brand new series that I've entitled Empowered. And we started out by talking about being empowered by thirst. We looked at John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38, where Jesus said, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, in this text, Jesus gave us instruction on how to live spirit-filled lives. And that's what it means to be empowered. See, we need to understand and know that God always meets His people at the level of their expectation and desire. And we can even say that God meets His people at the level of their thirst. Thirst is an unquenchable desire. And thirst is a sign of life. We talked about all those things last week. 
And if you missed last week, I would encourage you to go back in this social media feed or to go to our YouTube channel at Elation Church and check out last week's message. But today we're going to move on forward as we as we consider what we did last week and and we're talked about having a thirst not for gifts or fruit or experiences or manifestations of the Holy Spirit. But we need to have an unquenchable desire for a deeper, fuller relationship with God. I've got a question. Do you desire to be or do you consider yourself to be when it comes to God's word? Do you consider yourself to be a scholar or a soldier? Some people look at God's Word where it's just an academic exercise, where, where they just want to learn more and more and more about the Word of God. And now the Bible encourages us to study, to show ourselves approved. But it doesn't end there. I mean, we're called also to be soldiers or representatives or ambassadors in the kingdom of God. And the Bible uses all of those languages to talk about our action in the kingdom of God. But some people want to be all about action and not about being a student. So some people say that I'm just a soldier for God. Some people say I'm a scholar of God's word and we need to consider being both. Now today we're going to move forward from what Jesus said in the Gospel of John, and we're going to move into Acts because the book of Acts is a book that displays the power of God and it displays the empowered life. One thing I want us to realize heading into it is that Jesus is found in every verse in the first 11 verses of Acts, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So let's begin in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And it says this, In my first book I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. Now, Luke wrote the book of Acts. He also wrote the Gospel of Luke. Now, we need to have a little bit of background to understand this book of Acts. Luke Luke was not an actual eyewitness to the life of Jesus. He wasn't one of the disciples that spent every day with Jesus during that three years of ministry on earth. But Luke was an intellectual, investigative reporter. He was a well-educated doctor from Antioch. He was a disciple of the apostles. He was never married, had no wife or children. He was a friend of Paul, and actually he traveled with the Apostle Paul until Paul's martyrdom. Luke died at 84 years of age, and it's described that he died full of the Holy Spirit. Let's go back to Acts chapter 1 and look at verse 3. It says this, During the 40 days after Jesus' crucifixion, he appeared to the apostles from time to time. And he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God, which was one of Jesus' favorite subjects to teach about. Now, Christianity is not just based on mere philosophy. It's not just a system of ideas. Many religions in this world are just built around a system of ideas. Christianity is not based on a holy place to be visited. That's not what Christianity is about. Some religions talk about going to this holy place and that's your spiritual journey. But Christianity is not based on mere philosophy or a holy place. Christianity is based on actual historical events and a person. And that person is Jesus. Let's go to verse 4 and 5. Once, when Jesus was eating with the apostles, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. So today we're going to be talking about being empowered by waiting. Empowered by waiting. So Jesus is telling them, I mean, he'd already spent three years with them. 
He had died on the cross, been resurrected from the grave. Now he's spending time with them again. In some ways, you would think the disciples would be saying, all right, we're ready to go. We're, we're ready to do everything you taught us and everything you showed us. We're, we're ready to go. But Jesus told them in verse 4, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. And that gift is that the Holy Spirit was going to be in them and upon them. Verse 5, Jesus said, John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. This is the gift of the Father, and he was encouraging his disciples to wait to be empowered. He's saying, look, don't leave Jerusalem. Wait to be empowered. And from this, we need to take the idea that we can't live the Christian life without being empowered, without the Holy Spirit being in us and upon us, we can't really live the Christian life or advance the kingdom of God in this earth. Now Luke's first book, the Gospel of Luke, was basically about Jesus' life, but Luke's second book is about Jesus' power. It's about being empowered by the Holy Spirit. And Christianity ultimately is experiencing the life and the power of Jesus. Let's go back to Acts chapter 1, verse 6. It says this, So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore your kingdom? They said, is this the time? Because we thought the Messiah was going to come deliver us from the people over us at that time would have been the Romans. We thought the Messiah was going to deliver us from the Romans and we're going to have our own nation not controlled by any other government. Lord, is it time? Is this the time when you're going to free Israel and restore your kingdom? And Jesus' answer to them that we're going to look at, he's basically saying, look, the kingdom of God is bigger than that. See, they were always looking for an earthly kingdom. And they were trying to fit Jesus into the puzzle of an earthly kingdom of Israel. But the kingdom of God was bigger than that, and the kingdom of God is bigger than that. In verse 7, Jesus said, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, because there is a day when Jesus is going to rule this earth for a thousand years. All right? So he said the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. And they're not for you to know now is what he told his disciples. And basically he's saying, look guys, don't be sidetracked. Don't be sidetracked. The kingdom of God is bigger than Israel being freed and me sitting on a throne in Jerusalem. No. He's saying, look, guys, I want you to be more concerned with your going, with your empowered going, than you are about when I'm coming back. And that's what he's telling us today, because some people get so wrapped up on, when's Jesus coming back? When's Jesus coming back? I'm trying to figure out all this prophecy, and I'm trying to understand all this, and when, you know, they're trying... Trying to just, and they get, they spend their whole lives trying to focus in on and try to figure out when Jesus is coming back. And Jesus is still saying to us, Look, you need to be more concerned with today and your going and your empowered going, representing my kingdom, than you are about future events. That's, that's what you need to be concerned about. And in verse 8, Acts 1 8, very familiar verse for, for most people who are serious students of the Bible, it says, but you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus says, look guys, you need to be empowered and you need to be concerned about your going. Now, most people have probably never heard the name Alfred Nobel. Now, he's a Swedish scientist, and you may have heard of the Nobel Prize, which is named after the scientist Alfred Nobel. 
Well, in the mid-1800s, he invented a very powerful substance. And when Jesus said that word, you will receive power, when he used that word power, see, that's the Greek word dunamis. And Alfred Nobel invented a substance in the mid-1800s, and he took that Greek word dunamis and rearranged it just a little bit, and he gave a name to his powerful invention, dynamite. Dynamite. So, the Holy Spirit's power is an explosive power. Not like Alfred Nobel, not, not like his dynamite, which brings destruction. The Holy Spirit empowers us with life and love and joy and peace and empowers us to do the work of God in this earth. But it's no just lame power. It's, it's, a, it's a huge, huge resource of power for me and for you. Now, let's take a look at Jesus and his life and his reliance on the Holy Spirit because after all, he relied on the Holy Spirit, even though he was fully God. I mean, Jesus was fully God and fully man at the same time. He had access and availability. He had all of the divine attributes of God in him at all times. All right? So he's fully God. And sometimes it's hard for us to understand this because we think that everything Jesus did on this earth was his own power, but the Word of God tells us that he used the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you think about Jesus being fully God but not operating as fully God, I want to, I want to give you a little illustration to think about. Now, don't, don't try to take this all the way to the end because every illustration has a point where it ends. You can't, you can't just keep digging and digging and digging and digging and formulating all these ideas because if we do, then we're going to wind up not being true to the Word of God. But I want you to think about Superman. He's <laughs> like, where in the world did that come from? Well, just go with me a second. Was Superman Superman all the time? Well, did he always act like Superman? No, because there were times when he had a job at the Daily Planet, right? And who was he to everybody at that point? He was Clark Kent, right? So did Clark Kent ever do anything like superhuman? No, because he chose to not be Superman when he was Clark Kent. He, he chose not to operate in the power and the strength of Superman until he went into the nearby phone booth or the or the janitor's closet and came out with his Superman uniform. Well, I just want you to think about this because people have a hard time with Jesus being fully God but yet relying on the Father and the Holy Spirit to be sent and empowered. But listen, think of it that way. I mean, when, when Clark Kent was in the Daily Planet, he had all of the resources of being Superman, all of the strength of being Superman. He had it all, all the time but he chose not to operate in it. And that's what Jesus did as our perfect example in this earth. It wasn't that it wasn't available to him. He just chose not to operate in his own divine attributes and power while he was on this earth. He was fully God at all times, had full access to all the divine attributes. They were all in him. He is God. Yet, Jesus relied on the Holy Spirit. There were times as a human, he was hungry, he was tempted, he was exhausted, he was rejected. And every time, he relied on the power of the Holy Spirit to see him through. See, Jesus showed us what it was like to live a Spirit-filled, Spirit-led, and Spirit-empowered life. Let's take a look at some verses. Luke Chapter 1, verse 35. We're going to stay with Luke. Um, as we're looking at Luke wrote the book of Acts. Luke wrote the gospel of Luke like we talked about. So Luke 1, 35. Jesus, or Luke describes this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. As even at Jesus' birth, 
The Bible says this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Luke 3, 22, when Jesus was baptized by John, says this, the Holy Spirit in bodily form descended on him, Jesus, like a dove. And we find in the life of Jesus in the Gospels, he didn't do any miraculous things. He No healing, no miracles until after he was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him, descended upon him like a dove. Luke 4, 1 says, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, so, Jesus had waited 30 years, and then the Holy Spirit came upon him, and then he was led by the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit, even though he was God. The entire time he was being a perfect example for you and for me. Luke 4.14 says this, Then Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit's power. See, Jesus, he had access to all the power of God, all the attributes of God, but yet in his humanity, he was filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Luke 4, verses 18 and 19 says this. In one of Jesus' first messages in the synagogue, he said this. He, He got up and he read this prophecy about him. And what did it say? He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me, he has empowered me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me, the the Spirit of the Lord has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, and the oppressed will be set free. So the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus, he empowered Jesus, and he sent Jesus. Luke chapter 10 verse 21 says this, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So again, Jesus showed us what it was like to live a Spirit-filled, Spirit-led, and Spirit-empowered life. He's our example, right? Let's go on to verse 8, or let's read it again says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. What is this empowering for? See, we wait to be empowered to be sent on God's mission. Now, we need to consider this. Because so many times, I believe, we, we make mistakes by heading out in our own talent, in our own ability, in our own strength to try to do the work of God. But we need to be empowered by waiting. We need, we need to wait on God. We need to get direction from God. We need to be empowered For each thing we do for God, we need the Holy Spirit upon us. As children of God, He's already in us, but we need the Holy Spirit upon us to do the work of God. We need to wait to be empowered and wait to be sent on God's mission. Let's go to verses 9 through 11. It says this, After saying this, Jesus was taken up into a cloud while they were watching and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. So, In this story today, in Acts 1, verses 1 through 11, we see Jesus in every verse, 
And as we wrap up our lesson today, we see that this same Jesus is coming back. And my question to you is, are you ready? Do you know him? Are you ready for his return? You can be by believing in him, by confessing your sin to him, by believing that he is who the Bible says he is, by surrendering your life to him and asking him to be your Lord, you can be ready for Jesus' return. If you're not, I want to ask you to consider praying with me. And listen, there's nothing magic about this prayer, but if you listen to what this prayer is saying, and if this is what you want to say to God from your heart, I believe he'll hear you. I believe he'll forgive you. I believe He will adopt you into His family. I believe He will send His Holy Spirit to live on the inside of you. One Friday morning, I prayed a prayer. It went like this, and you know what? I've never been the same since. So if you're not ready in relationship with Jesus, knowing that you're forgiven and right with God, I invite you to pray with me now. Let's pray together. I prayed a prayer. It went like this. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for me, rose again from the grave. I realize today that I've messed up, that that I'm a sinner. I've I've fallen short. I've, I've missed a mark. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to wash me clean. And Jesus, today, I ask you to be my Lord. I want to live for you. I want to know you. I want to follow you. I don't want my life to just be about me all the time anymore. I want my life to be about you. Jesus, help me to turn away from everything in my life that don't honor you, that don't please you. Help me to turn away. Make me new. Change me by the power of your word and the power of your Holy Spirit. Jesus, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for welcoming me into your family. Thank you for giving me your gift of eternal life. And thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be with me and in me, to empower me to live for you. Amen. If you pray with me, I, I want to send you something. Here at Lation Church, we want to send you a little blue book. It's a New Testament of the Bible. And it has about 40 little devotions in the front of it. The partners here at Elation, they help us to do this. And we're, it's not going to cost you anything. As a matter of fact, we're going to pay for the shipping. We're going to pay for it. We, we just want to give it to you to help you grow in this relationship with Jesus. If you pray with me, please give us your address, your mail address, either in a private message or in the comment section under this video. Or you can go to our www.elation.church website and there's a there's a place there that you can share this information with us we would be so honored to be able to send you this and help you grow in your relationship with Christ and when we're excited about what God did in your heart today hey for everybody who already knows Christ and you're already in a relationship with him let's let's wait on the Lord to be empowered and sent to do His work. His work's all around us this week. And He wants to make a difference in this world through you and through me. Let's pray together. God, thank You for today. Thank You for this time. And I pray that we would be doers of Your Word, not just hearers only. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining with us this week here at Elation Church. And thanks for being a part of our Elation family. We also want to say a special thank you to all of our partners that make this service possible. If you've ever considered joining with our partner team, it's fast and secure and easy. All you have to do is text the word ELATION to 28950. That's ELATION. Text that word ELATION to 28950 and follow the prompts. In that way, you can partner with us financially. Another way you can partner with us is by sharing this video, just hitting that share button right under this video to share today's message with all of your social media friends. And in doing that, you'll be partnering with us and bringing good news of great joy to all people. We look forward to seeing you right back here next week as we continue our series on what it means to be empowered 
here at Elation Church. This online worship experience was brought to you by the friends and partners of Elation Church. 